We acknowledge the Gandangaro people, traditional custodians of the land on which we are speaking to you from. In the spirit of reconciliation, we also acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Thanks for checking out this virtual tour of Talo River Passive House. I'm Kel, one of the house's owners, and I've lived here for just on 12 months with my husband Duncan, who you'll meet a little bit later. The house sits on a 100 acre bush block located in the southern tablelands of New South Wales. Our decision to build a passive house here was decided pretty quickly after we'd lived on site for a few years in a temporary shed house where we experienced temperatures ranging from minus 10 degrees to 46 degrees and a highly unreliable power grid. However, living on site also confirmed that we wanted to build something pretty special here architecturally to make the most of our building pad's incredible views while minimising our impact on the surrounding environment. Fortunately, Sue Connor from Gaia Architects and Darren Parkinson from Eclipse Passive House and their combined team of certified passive house designers and tradespeople were very much up to our challenge. Their response to our brief was perfect for the site and our requirements, but pretty unconventional for a passive house, with a floor plan comprising three interconnected pavilions and lots of glass to take in the views. Their construction approach was also not conventional. Our three bedroom, two bathroom, 180 square metre house sits on concrete piers and a steel frame and our floors, walls and roof were constructed using Eclipse Passive Houses panels which were all prefabricated off site. For those that like the technical detail, the roof panels specifically are 240mm LVL timber framing with 240mm cellulose insulation and a Proclima Exdesana external weather resistive barrier. The wall and roof panels are comprised of 240mm timber stud framing and 240mm of cellulose insulation with a Proclima Intello internal vapour control membrane and Proclima Exdesana external weather resistant barrier. They also feature internal and external cavity battens. When you live in a rural area, it can be challenging to get tradespeople out to site. So building using Eclipse Passive House's prefabricated building system supported by their network of experienced trades really was the best option for us. And prefabricating the main elements of the house in factory controlled conditions using precision manufacturing techniques also made it significantly easier to achieve passive house performance standards cost effectively. This is why the house achieved a final blower door test result of 0.57 air changes per hour at 50 pascal. And it's why our final certification application is with the Passive House Institute for assessment currently. We think this is pretty impressive, especially when you consider the complexity of the design. If you're interested in learning more about this construction process, you can check out our 2021 Sustainable House Day Tour, which includes a time lapse capturing our house being installed in just 10 days in the middle of winter. Our windows and external doors are from the Logic House Logic Win 88mm triple glaze range, which complies with all local standards, including BAL 29 bushfire ratings and is Passive House certified for warm temperature climates. We also selected spruce for our internal frames as this option offers the best insulation value. As you can see, the house features many fixed windows to frame views, as well as tilt only and tilt and turn windows. We've also installed Nordic Blinds honeycomb blinds in our bedrooms and they're brilliant product for bathrooms to provide privacy and support temperature management. The house runs with a Stiebel Eltron heat recovery ventilation unit. Given the extremes we experience with external temperatures, we've also installed a small energy efficient air conditioner, the ceiling fans, and an Ostraflam wood fire for active cooling and heating. The wood fire, something we know is a controversial inclusion as there's questions around whether they're actually needed in Australian builds, is specifically designed for passive houses with internal ceiling and an external air feed. Our kitchen is fitted with a Naba Compare Bixo Balanced Extractant Supply System, which allows external air in when the range hood is running, but has an airtight seal on both the intake and vent when the range hood is off. We also invested in a KNX home automation system to help run the house. Our system is primarily designed to maintain our house's internal comfort level with very little interaction. It achieves this by monitoring and using data collected from temperature, humidity and CO2 sensors inside the house 
and external temperature and humidity sensors to automatically adjust the HRV and air conditioning to manage cooling and heating. We also use KNX programs to manage our lighting. As you'd expect for a passive house, we chose lighting options and appliances with excellent energy ratings and prioritise using materials and products with solid sustainability and healthy living credentials. For example, our inbuilt cabinetry has been designed to minimise dust collection. It's formaldehyde free and our bench tops are composite stone made using recycled materials. Our painters use low VOC or VOC free paints, sealers and varnishes. And our Forbo marmoleum flooring is made from natural raw materials using a production process that is CO2 neutral without offsetting. It's also comfortable underfoot for those with old bones and great if you have dogs. Being largely off-grid and responsible for our water and septic system, we installed an EconoCycle aerated wastewater treatment system that treats our wastewater to irrigation standards and disperses it well away from the river, which runs into Sydney's main water supply. The house is run using a 10 kilowatt solar system and 10 kilowatt battery, supported by a generator and grid backup when necessary. All potable water is sourced from roofs and stored in tanks that have a combined capacity of around 100,000 litres. Experiencing a bushfire when we first moved here also influenced our decision to select products and building methods providing maximum protection. Our building approval required us to build to bow 19 on three sides and bow 29 on the fourth. However, we decided to build to bow 29 standards at a minimum and up spec to products specified for flame zone requirements where budget permitted. The house is clad in colour bond, although you will notice we have a small amount of timber too, which is slower burning recycled treated hardwood. The deck surrounding the house is constructed using Modwood Flame Shield, a product made from recycled wood and plastic with a fire retardant additive rated to bow 40. We also used fly screen to seal the areas under the deck and at the sides of the house and in the gutters to prevent highly combustible leaf and bark litter from collecting. Our landscaping features hard mulch, specifically recycled aggregate and well irrigated bush fire resistant native plants for added protection. Hi, I'm Duncan, the other owner of Tarlow River Passive House. One of the most valuable things for us when we were researching and building our house was learning from the experience of others primarily by talking to homeowners during real house tours pre-COVID, as well as hearing from them during information sessions hosted by Renew. So we thought it would be beneficial to share some thoughts on what it's been like to live in our passive house over the last 12 months. We heard a great quote at a webinar a while back, passive houses need active owners, and we can confirm this is the case. The critical learning for us is that you need to proactively help the house manage its indoor temperature when the external temperatures are at the extremes, particularly in summer. The autumn and spring experience in the house, along with 90% of summer and winter days, has been exactly what we hoped. Passively comfortable temperature with excellent indoor air quality. The only thing we need to keep an eye on in these times is the lower midday sun through the big northern windows on hotter days. We did make the mistake of not having enough air conditioning throughout the house. Particularly with our house's pavilion design, the temperature does not really equalise across the pavilions despite the HRV. So the bedrooms and study get warmer than comfortable in the long hot spells which we expect to increase as the world warms. While there seems to be some resistance to putting aircon through passive houses, the reality is they don't need to be used much. They are a great tool you can rely on to manage inside temps when the house needs some help. In our case, the little aircon in it uses about 1 kilowatt down to 200 watts to keep the main pavilion very comfortable on hot summer afternoons, running off available solar. The only thing we need to keep an eye on in these times is the lower midday sun through the big northern windows on hotter days. We do still need to install some external shading to help shield specific windows from the sun, which will help next summer. But in the meantime, we've been actively opening doors and windows in the morning during summer to bring in the cooler air. As for winter, despite the concerns that wood fires are redundant when building passive houses in Australia, in our house it's proven to be a great decision. In 2022 we had rain or overcast and very cold days for weeks on end, with little sun and maximum temps well under 10 degrees in the middle of the day. Lighting a fire every few nights throughout this period helped keep the inside temperature stable without drawing on the stored solar which was already under pressure during winter to run the aircon. We know this solution isn't for everyone, but being surrounded by 90 acres of bush that needs to be maintained for bushfire, 
also means this is an excellent tool to have in our active heating toolbox. We also thought it would be interesting to share how the house performs energy consumption wise as we capture a lot of data on this. The good news is that our overall energy consumption has reduced by around 75% compared to the house we previously lived in at the same site. And we expect to improve on this as we collect more data across the seasons and tweak things. However, the other learning to add here is that it's just as important to balance comfort and house enjoyment when you're thinking about energy savings. For example, the appliance that uses the most energy here is our heat pump hot water system. We've already selected a highly energy efficient model, so the only way we can reduce its energy consumption is by enjoying our new bath less. And that's not on the cards. So that concludes the virtual tour of Tarlow River Passive House. We hope to be able to open the house up for real life sustainable house day tours someday soon. If you're interested to learn more about Tarlow River Passive House, we're happy to chat. You can email us at tarlow.river.passive.house at gmail.com. We hope you'll agree that Gaia Architects and Eclipse Passive House have helped us achieve a beautiful, high-performing passive house. We encourage you to get in touch with them if you're considering this type of build via the details shown on screen.